cover calls are one of the easiest ways in order to increase your income. Last month I made over $1,200 just by buying AMD and using the shares that I owned in order to sell cover calls again. So in this video, I'm gonna be explaining the strategy using an actual example, and then we'll talk about the benefits and the risks of using cover calls. First, what is a cover call? A cover call includes selling a call option in order to open it. And you've probably already bought a call option before, hoping the stock would go up. And whenever you bought that call option, you paid a premium in order to open it. But whenever you sell a call option, like with a cover call, you're gonna get paid a premium from the buyer. So instead of paying a debit in order to open your call option, you're gonna receive a credit whenever you open a cover call. And instead of thinking the stock will go up after you buy a call option, whenever you open a cover call, you're hoping the stock will come down or at least stay below your strike price on your expiration date. And the reason for this is because if the stock is above your strike price on your expiration, then you have to sell 100 shares of your stock. So you're gonna need 100 shares in order to use a strategy, and those 100 shares are gonna be put up as collateral in case a trade goes against you where the stock goes above your strike price on your expiration. And it doesn't matter how high the stock is on your expiration date. As long as it's above your strike price, you have to sell those 100 shares. This means you could sell a cover call with a $50 strike price. The stock ends up doubling by the time your expiration date comes around to $100. So now it's trading at $100, but you decided to sell it at $50. This actually happened to me with AMD, where I decided to sell it at the $76 strike price, and now the stock is trading at $95. So if I had waited a few more weeks, I could have got $9,500 in order to sell my 100 shares, but I decided to sell them for $7,600. But the credit that I got in order to sell that cover call is going to help to soften the blow a bit. I ended up getting paid $600 in order to open that cover call. So if we divide that $600 by the 100 shares that I sold, this is going to add $6 to my break-even price from the $76 strike price for a break-even of $82. This means if I decided to buy my 100 shares of AMD back, I would need to buy it below $82 in order to make a profit. But if I decided to buy it above $82, then I'd be buying high, selling low, and taking a loss. And if I had another 100 shares for another cover call, here's how I'd do it. Right now, AMD is trading for about $99. So if we go to the option chain, the first thing we're gonna do, literally with any option strategy, is going to be to choose our expiration date. And with a cover call, you wanna keep this relatively short. Anywhere between one week out, if you wanna be a more active trader, like a day trader, or you could stretch the expiration date out as far as about 45 days to September 23rd, if you want to be a swing trader and the further you go out in expiration, the more credit that you're going to get paid in order to sell your call option. So if we decided to sell this week's expiration date on August 12th and at the money call or the one that's closest to the current market price right now, AMD is trading at 98.80. So if we sold the $99 call. We're going to get paid $144 in credit. But if we stretch our expiration date out just by one week to August 19th as our expiration date, we're going to get paid $285 in credit or about twice as much as this week's expiration. And the further we go out in expiration, the more and more money that we're going to get paid. So if we go out to September 2nd, this is paying $465 versus $285 for next week's expiration date. Now choosing your strike prices is, is a little bit different. If you want to maximize your income, then you could sell in the money call options or a strike price that's below the current market value. And you're gonna get paid more in credit because the option has intrinsic value or the difference between the current market price of 98.84 and say the $95 strike price that has $3.84 of intrinsic value and the option is worth $695, which means that the option has a total of $311 of extrinsic value, or the difference between the intrinsic value and the total value for the option. But the problem is the further you go in the money, the less extrinsic value your option is going to have. So you're getting less bang for your buck the deeper you go in the money. So if we went with say a $90 strike price, Yes, we're gonna get paid $1,045, but this option only has like $160 worth of extrinsic value, which is almost nothing because it's so deep in the money. And the same thing happens whenever you go out of the money. 
So if I decided that I wanted to sell my 100 shares at the 105 strike price, this option is going to pay me $224. So it has $224 of extrinsic value. Since this option is out of the money, it has zero intrinsic value. And the further and further I go out of the money, the cheaper these options are going to get. So if I decided to sell it at $110, I'm only gonna get paid $111 in credit. But the great thing about an out of the money option is you're decreasing the odds of having to sell your 100 shares. And you can get a rough estimate for the odds of your option expiring in the money and having to sell your shares by looking at the delta value for your option. So the delta value on this option is negative 0.1936, which means that there's roughly a 19.4% chance of this option expiring in the money to where you would have to sell your 100 shares of AMD at $110. So the lower your odds are whenever you sell this cover call, the less credit that you're gonna get. If we went with a 105 strike price, we get paid about twice as much in credit and our delta value is 32.7. So there's about a 33% chance of getting assigned to have to sell our 100 shares of AMD at $105, and we're gonna get paid $224 in credit. This means if AMD is above our 105 strike price on the expiration date, we have to sell our 100 shares at 105, but since we didn't buy the option back, then we get to keep that $224 in credit, so our break-even price would be the 105 strike price plus our 224 in credit for break-even of 107.24. And you can calculate the break-even for any of these options just by adding the premium that you get whenever you open the option to your strike price, again, to come up with your break-even. Now, the sweet spot whenever it comes to a cover call is choosing the at-the-money strike price. Now, you're going to have about a 50-50 chance of the option expiring in the money since the delta value is 53, but you're going to get paid a whopping $465 in credit versus, again, that 105 strike price was only paying us $225. So we're getting more than twice as much money to sell the at-the-money strike price by taking on that extra risk we're getting more income out of it. But if AMD ends up going up past our $99 strike price, then we're agreeing to sell our 100 shares at 99. So if it's at 105 on our expiration date, we decided to sell it at 99. So we're missing out on $600 in extra profits that we could have had otherwise. And at that point, this option would have $600 of intrinsic value. So if we wanted to keep our 100 shares instead of selling them to the market, we'd have to buy this option back for at least $600 if we don't want to lose our 100 shares. So that's one way you can protect yourself if the stock starts to go against you. But at the same time, that option would be worth over $600 when we only got paid $465 in order to open it. So at that point, we would be taking about $135 loss or more. And the great thing about cover calls is you don't need to buy it back in order to close it. You can just let the option expire, sell your 100 shares, unlike a naked call where you'd have to buy the option back at a much higher price and take a realized loss. But with a cover call, you're going to have to sacrifice your shares. So if AMD kept going up after I sold this cover call, then I'd definitely be shooting myself in the foot and sacrificing the growth of the company. But that's the risk you have to take in order to make an income by selling cover calls. There's also another risk you might run into called early assignment risk. And this happens whenever the stock goes above your strike price before your expiration date. If it goes far enough in the money, then the person that bought that call option may decide to exercise early to where you have to sell your 100 shares of a stock before your expiration date. Now, this is really no different from the option just expiring. Since you still get to keep the credit, you have to sell your 100 shares but it's just happening before the expiration. Now, most of the time, this won't happen because the option will have extrinsic value to where it makes more sense for the option buyer to sell the option back to the market and use the cash from it in order to buy the 100 shares. But sometimes the extrinsic value can be so low, either because the option is so deep in the money, so close in expiration, or maybe there's a dividend coming up. If there's an ex-dividend date and that dividend is greater than the extrinsic value, then that increases the odds of you getting assigned early for your cover call. Most of the time, you don't have to worry about early assignment, but if it does happen, it's just like the option expiring before the expiration date. And those are the risks of cover calls. Now let's talk about the benefits. 
The most obvious benefit is the income that you get whenever you sell a cover call. Last month, I ended up getting paid $1,200 to own 200 shares of AMD, and that $1,200 was enough to pay my rent this month. Another benefit of cover calls is reducing your cost basis, because every time you sell a cover call, you're receiving a credit, and you can apply that credit to your average cost by subtracting it to come up with your new cost basis. So over the past six months, I've sold $3,600 worth of premium on AMD for my 200 shares. So if we divide $3,600 by 200, I reduce my cost basis by $18. So instead of having the shares at my 95 average cost, I reduce my cost basis to $77. And that's pretty much all the benefits of the cover call. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, show some love, leave a like. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. And thank you to all my patrons for the support. And as always, remember to stay positive, stay green. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.